states and communities through educational, research, and outreach programs that improve people's lives every day. But few things we do seem to connect us more with our communities and our region than sports, which generates excitement, demonstrates our commitment to excellence, and opens conversations about the many other wonderful things we do at Michigan State. Today we're gathered to celebrate another milestone in the life of MSU, a new football coach and a new era for MSU football. You're going to hear a lot of great things about Mel Tucker this evening. Personally, I'm excited about his energy and positive enthusiasm, his dynamic and motivational approach to working with student athletes. They are students first, and I appreciate that our athletic department never loses sight of that fact. I'd also like to recognize Coach D'Antonio and thank him for his 13 very successful years at Michigan State University. Thank you, Ms. Yes. Thank you. Taking our football program to the next level and making us a national leader. He's setting a high bar for Mel Tucker, the one I believe that Coach Tucker is more than ready to be. Coach Tucker has already been a part of our football program, starting his career in the 1990s with Nick Saban. But since then, his experience at the collegiate and NFL levels have been absolutely top-notch, and he understands the value of prioritizing student success. Michigan State is a nationally recognized program. We are a program to be proud of, and we are proud that many candidates want to be at Michigan State University. It's an incredibly attractive program to lead, and one we want to push to new milestones. I'm thrilled with the selection of Coach Tucker. He has a bright future at Michigan State University, as will all the students and athletes come to play for him and get an excellent education at our university. Now I'd like to introduce one of my bosses, the chairperson of the Michigan State University Board of Trustees, the Honorable Diane Byron. Thank you, President Stanley. I'd like to, at this time to acknowledge my colleagues on the Board of Trustees that have joined us this evening. If you please stand so we can recognize you. I'm here to welcome Mel Tucker, his wife Jojo, and his two sons, Christian and Joseph, to back to Michigan State University. So welcome. We are ecstatic to have you here. We're ecstatic that you are all part of our Spartan family. We look forward to spending more time together once you make the full transition to East Lansing and to our campus community. I'd like to thank Athletic Director Bill Beekman his staff, and those on the search committee for a very swift and successful process for the 25th football coach at MSU. A week ago, it seemed hard to believe that Coach D'Antonio would not be coming back for another season, and I know some of the people worried about the football program. We are here now a week later, having landed a highly regarded individual and top coach with strong credentials and experience. The board put its trust in the search process, and we appreciate the athletic that the athletic director kept us updated along the way. From our perspective, and I know the president shares this point as well, our coach values the development of student athletes on and off the field, who would continue the success of our football program has seen in the last decade, and find a way to build upon it. From everything we've learned about Coach Tucker in the last few days, we're confident that we have the right leader to take us forward. At this time, I would like to introduce our Athletic Director, Bill Beekman. Placing phone calls 
uh, doing a lot of backgrounding and, uh, and being Coach Izzo. So thank you very much. General Counsel Brian Quinn was invaluable in the process. And lastly, I'd like to thank President Stanley and our Board of Trustees, uh, who were uh, extraordinarily deft at having a hand on the rudder about letting us work through the process to find what we all believe to be an extraordinary outcome. I'd also like to acknowledge the coaches who are here today. Coaches, would you please stand? extraordinary job of guiding our, our many athletic programs uh, and we, we, we just are, are, uh, are so much better for the diversity of, of sport here at MSU with our 19 head coaches across, across 25 programs. The established for this search uh, was very clear at the start. We were looking first and foremost for a person of character, with passion for MSU. Someone with head coaching experience, a track record of coaching success, a strong, especially in the Midwest, someone with Big Ten experience, and someone who is a gifted teacher. A fit here is critical. Ultimately, we found a coach who shares our passion and our vision for Spartan football. So who is Coach Tucker? Well, on paper, he has an extraordinary track record of success. He's got two national championships under his belt at Alabama and Ohio State. He's got extensive NFL experience as a position coach, a coordinator, and an interim head coach for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And he got his start as a graduate assistant right here under Coach Nick Saban. But it was meeting Mel in person that convinced me he was the right person for the job. His energy, his drive, his preparation, his commitment to excellence all showed through almost immediately. He's the right coach at the right time to move Michigan State forward with passion and energy. He's Teddy Roosevelt's man in the arena. And he's our 25th head coach, and we're darn thrilled to have him. Thank you, Coach Tucker. It's now my pleasure to introduce Antoine Simmons, MSU senior linebacker. Antoine, would you please come forward? Antoine, speaking on behalf of the football team, embodies what it is Spartan. He doesn't run from a challenge. He's one of the unquestioned leaders on this team, and he was one of the players the athletic department reached out to when they wanted input on the selection of the next head coach at Michigan State University. Please join me in welcoming Antoine Simmons.
team with the reunion at the Maryland game. I can't think of a better example of anyone who personifies what it means to be a Spartan and how to succeed at Michigan State University. Please join me in welcoming.
So who better to introduce our new coach than his wife, Jo Ellen Tucker. Um, as Tom said, Jo Ellen has Big Ten ties of her own. She earned her undergrad degree at the University of Illinois and her law degree from Rutgers. Please join me in welcoming Jo Ellen Jojo to the stage. I didn't uh, mention the people who were 
truly responsible for me being here today, standing in front of you today. My family, My mom, Brenda, who uh, taught me to be a lifelong learner, and my dad, Mel Sr., who was a true football dad. Uh, thank you for always putting me and my brothers first and for showing me what real love and sacrifice is all about. To my wife, Jojo, and my sons, uh, Joseph, Food. And Chris said she was baby. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Uh, you are my true north, and you make it all worth it. Uh, the second responsibility. You know we hear a lot about um, what coaches might have a secret sauce to win. You know, who they work for, um, what coaching tree they came from. Well, to me, there's no secret sauce. It's just people who taught me the responsibilities that we have as coaches. I've had, the, I've had the privilege of being mentored by some of the very best coaches in the profession. Some of the very best. I can't mention all of them because we'll be here all day. But for my playing career with Barry Alvarez, the Godfather, to working with Nick Saban, not once, but three times. And to Coach Trussell, Coach Jim Trussell, and Romeo Cannell. These men shape me, and they shape my coaching path. Not, they not only taught me the X's and the O's, but they taught me the intangibles of creating a winning mindset and a winning culture. <coughs> the responsibility and importance of hard work Humility, accountability, and having a serving mindset, and to love the game, to love the game. That brings me to number three. You have to love it. You have to love it. Anyone who knows me knows that I love the game of football. Football has given me everything I have. And I love people who love the game. I love people who love the game. My players, coaches, uh, fans, media, if you love it, I'll probably like you. We play it, we coach it, Watch it, we cover it, because we absolutely love it. So today, I'm excited about Michigan State football, because I love football here, right here. championships, uh, Coach Saban taking us to the Citrus Bowl, and creating a winning future here in football. <coughs> I'm excited. I promise you that we will do everything to prepare, practice, and play relentless and accountable football. Toughness and integrity. We will do that. We have much to live up to, 
and much to prove. And I believe the time is right now. The time is now. Gratitude, responsibility, and loving Spartan football. With that, I just want to say thank you again. Um, to all of you here, thank you. To all of our fans, and to the media who made it here on short notice, thank you for your time and being here to support us. Thank you so much. Without, all, without you, you know, we couldn't get it done. Uh, can't do it without, it, without you. So with that, with that, like I said, I'll be short. I'll open, I'll open it up to a friendly Q&A. <laughs> <laughs> this one, if mics on both sides, raise your hand. over here. Thinking back to 1997 and 1998, could you ever have envisioned yourself back here after this career you had leading this program? You know, I hoped, I hoped. Uh, my dream was to come back here and be the head coach. That was my dream. You know, when, you, when you work for a guy like Nick Saban, when you see him do it, you know, you can't help but to aspire to be able to in that position one day and, and, uh, and do that. So uh, this is truly, a, this is certainly a dream come true for me to, to be back here. The time has gone very fast. It's, uh, it seems like just yesterday um, that I was here 400, 400 bucks a month as a GA sleeping <laughs> under my desk. <laughs> I try to always make sure that, that when Nick said we walked past the GA office, I was there coming and going. You could hear him shaking that, that change in his pocket coming down the hall and you knew Coach Saban was coming down the, down the deal. And I was right there at attention. So, yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's special. You know, it's, uh, it's uh, and I don't take it lightly. Uh, I cherish this opportunity. Thank you for that question. Coach, we come over here. Coach, this fall, what should fans expect to see on the field? What is Coach Tucker's style? Yeah, first we'll be best condition. And that's the foundation of our program. Our program is built in the weight room. Um, we'll play with great technique and fundamentals. We'll play smart. We won't be ourselves. That's the goal. Um, we'll play fast. Both sides of the ball, special teams. Players play fastest when they know what they're doing. And last but not least, you know, we'll, we'll play physical football. And it's, uh, you know, that's really the name of the game. And, uh, and that's what, you know, that's what uh, Michigan State football has always been about. Hard nosed physical football. Now right here. Can you take us through the timeline from when Michigan State first reached out to you to, you know, finally agreeing, I'm going to do this, and just kind of take us through some of the details along the way? I'll do my best to spend a little bit of a blur. But uh, uh, late, uh, late last week, um, Michigan State showed interest. Strong interest, very strong interest. And uh, throughout the process, um, you know, I, uh, I decided that, that uh, it was time for me to take a step back from the process. Uh, obviously, there were other great candidates, and uh, the search continued. Uh, it circled back to me. 
sales will probably on uh, maybe Monday morning. Talk with, with, uh, with my representation. And, uh, you know, ultimately, if uh, sometime late last night, um, it was apparent to me that I needed to be here. Um, obviously, as you said, it's been a blur the last few days or the last week. Can you describe what you were wrestling with when you first seemed to commit back to Colorado and then came back to Michigan State? What what changed there and what were you wrestling with during that time? Yeah, um, you know, everything you know has a, has a has a process, and I'm very deliberate about you know how I go about my business and how I evaluate. Professionally and personally, and um, leaving Colorado was probably was is actually the uh, the toughest thing that I've that I've ever done in my in my in my career in my life actually. And so, um, but this is the this is the this is the right time. For me to be here, you know, that's really what it comes down to. You know, um, these the commitment is here, the, uh, the resources are here, the the uh, the want to, the leadership is here. Everything is here. Everything we need is here right now to get done what we need to get done. And so, um, although we all have to make tough decisions, decisions at times, um, this was certainly one of them. It was the right decision. Uh, and, um, and there's no doubt in my mind about that. Anybody that watched you play knew you love the game physically, but you love it as a student of it. I'm curious, this is the school that broke the color barrier. What does it mean to come back here and lead that program that 60 years ago changed college football? It's a, it's a, uh, it's an honor and it's a privilege, quite frankly. And uh, I feel extremely blessed to have this opportunity. We're going to make the most of it. And we're going to give it everything we have uh, every day. Uh, we owe it. I owe it to myself. I owe it to my family, the players, and all of us in the room here, um, and all of the great people that have come here before us. Um, you know, great players in the past, and great coaches. This is a, a, a program that has a, a rich story history and tradition of excellence, um, diversity, and um, it's, uh, there's very few places like this in America. Um, Antoine mentioned the, the uh, team meeting earlier and how intense that was. I just wonder what your message was to the guys that are here already and how quickly do you, would you like to get the staff and figure it out? Yeah, I mean, the message, um, you know, kind of in, in a nutshell, is that we're all in this thing together. Um, you know, I have your, I have your back, you know, and um, I'm gonna, we're going to support you, myself and my staff. Um, and it's going to, it's not going to be easy. You know, we're going to, we're going to work really hard. We're going to have a culture of accountability sense of urgency, attention to detail, unselfishness, you know, relentless attitude, competition, and it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. Um, and we're going to do it, and we're going to do it together. You know, every single person, uh, every single player is, uh, is important in our program. You know, 
everyone's got a clean slate at this point with, with me. Um, and we're going to move forward, forward from this point, you know, as a, as a, as a football team. And um, these guys, we, we need to graduate. We need to graduate our players. And we spent a significant amount of time talking about that. You know, first and foremost, you're here to get an education. You're here to get a degree. We want to help you launch your career um, after football. And uh, you know, obviously, my job is to help you get your first job whether it's the National Football League, or often uh, than that, it's uh, in the real world. And this is a great place um, to, launch, to launch that career. So um, those are some of the things that we touched upon. Thank you for that, for that question. Jim. Uh, well, Jim Tom Spartan, What are your impressions of the way Michigan State has grown since you were here on the inside in 1998. I'm interested in your observations as you come back and look around a little bit. Yeah, I haven't got the entire tour. It certainly looks uh, different than it looked in 1997, 1998. Um, it's, uh, it's very impressive to me. But when I walked in, uh, when we walked in today, I, I felt, I felt, uh, I felt something different. I felt something special. I felt there was an energy. There was a vibe. Uh, there was a uh, there was a uh, great. Uh, it was a positive environment. It's conducive to reaching your full potential. I think environment and expectations are two uh, main factors in becoming successful. And uh, the environment here is, is tremendous with the support everyone. Everyone is supporting one another um, and the expectations, like we talked about earlier, have always been high. Okay? And uh, they continue to be that. So um, this is it's truly one of the uh, one of the uh, great uh, coaching opportunities uh, in football. Steven. Obviously, the timing was unique on uh, both sides of this. I'm curious. Uh, first, what are sort of your next steps in the next week or two? And are there any challenges of taking a job like this at this time? Um, again, just with the time. Well, you know, we have to put the, uh, we have to put together a staff, and uh, I told the players I can't, you know, I'm not, I can't guarantee that I'm going to bring in, you know, every uh, guru or uh, some football genius. Actually, you know, uh, guy. Uh, we want to bring in first and foremost coaches of with tremendous character, with great role models for our players, family guys that care about young men, uh, and we're going to they're going to treat our young men as their own uh, children, their own their own uh, family, and so uh, that's a big part of what we're we'll be doing in the next the next few days, and I can assure you there's no shortage of great coaches out there who want to be here with me and with, our, with the, these young men. So, uh, and then you know, we, we're getting ready for spring ball, you know, so there's a uh, strength and conditioning aspect of it and a, a program of running and lifting and preparing ourselves so we can compete in spring ball. Um, and then you know, I've got to get to know, I've got to get to know uh, my peers, I've got to get to know Players, coaches, uh, uh, everyone in our in our university community here, um, and I'm really looking forward to that. I mean, I embrace um, embrace that opportunity. The, the challenges that, that we have say, at this point of the year are, um, you know, we're built for that. And we'll, we'll get it done. It won't take long. We have two more. <coughs> Mel in the middle here. Only obviously we've been here for a few hours, and we said this process has been a blur. Is it pretty much starting over from scratch with the team? You did, as far as you know, your knowledge of the roster is and the players, and kind of the identity of what Michigan State football has been recently. I have some work to do um, in terms of learning our roster, and, and, uh, and that's 
mean, that's part of what you do in an out of season um, of scheme evaluation, player evaluation, just find out what we need to do to get better. And so, uh, you know, it's, uh, that's you know, listen, the, we want to hit the ground running. You know, this is, uh, you know, time is of the essence. We're not going to waste any time. We're going to be efficient. We're going to be effective in everything that we do. You know, um, we're going to recruit. We're going to identify the players that we feel like can help us. Okay. And then we're going to target them. We're going to recruit them with the intent of signing those guys. So um, everything that has to, has to be done in a, in a, in a football program, um, quite frankly, has already started you know, for me. So it's, uh, you know, we sleep fast. We'll be sleeping fast and, uh, and getting after it. We're going to make the most of uh, every opportunity we have. Last one, Chris. No, uh, kind of wanted to know, from you, you obviously worked directly under Mark D'Antonio uh, previously, both here when you were a GA, when you were at Ohio State. How much Mark D'Antonio is there in you and your coaching philosophies? How many things are different? And do you have any plans or decisions to make with his assistance that, that you're still on staff? Yeah, um, I was here in 1997-98 as a graduate assistant. Coach Antonio was the secondary coach. And I left LSU with an excitement to uh, work alongside uh, Coach Antonio at Ohio State for Jim Trussell. And I worked with him for three years there. And obviously, um, he's one of those uh, great mentors that I've uh, learned a lot from. And he's helped shape um, you know, some of my football philosophies and things like that. And so I've always considered him a, uh, a, a friend and a tremendous, uh, just a tremendous, uh, tremendous football coach and, and a great, uh, outstanding person. And so uh, I'm looking forward to reconnecting with him. Thank everyone for coming. Any final words? Go green. Go green. Go green.